Hey everybody, Mark from Northeast Bass Fishing. How you guys doing? Well, I thought I'd do the next installment because I haven't done one in a while of my Bass Fishing 101 series and I was kind of thinking of ones I wanted to do. And um, I, I looked through the list of ones I had done already and then I came up with what I've been doing the most lately is throwing a drop shot. And I can't believe that I haven't done a drop shot video yet per se. So I thought I would pull out my drop shot stuff and some of the baits I like to use and and just kind of show it to you guys because I, I think personally for me it's something that I don't utilize as much as I should. You guys know I like to throw jigs, I like to throw power fish, and I think I ignore the drop shot, especially this time of year, uh, more than I should. Um, and then I, I really realized that when I was up at Lake Champlain for two weeks when finesse fishing was definitely, uh, at times, was definitely the better way to go for, for fish, uh, drop shotting, Ned Rig, things like that. So I pulled a lot of stuff out here. If you could see the table, it would look like a big mess too. But let me just show you the drop shot. If Let's say you're new to drop shotting. You've never done it before in your life. <clears throat> what I would suggest, <clears throat> this just happened. This is a, a drop shot rod I've used for a long time. It's an old all-star all rod. Um, it's a 6.9 medium. And um, this is a 3000 series reel. This is actually one of the new Ardent Ignite reels I got. Um, I used to use the 2000 series reel a lot, uh, but the 3000 is definitely better. Longer casts, your line doesn't get, you don't get, um, your line doesn't get as kinked up, it seems, because I just run straight floral. Um, there's a lot of people that like to throw leaders. Um, I personally don't. I don't trust leaders. Um, I just run straight, this is 8-pound floral, straight 8-pound floral. Um, if you're worried about line twist, you can always add a swivel. I don't really worry about it that much. But a drop shot is pretty simple, guys. It's pretty much a weight. And let's see if I can get this out of here without hitting everything. Weight, and I've got about, I don't know, whatever that is, about an 18-inch to maybe 2-foot leader. And, oops, and your drop shot hook. Small hook, and that's just a cylinders type weight. I believe that's a quarter ounce. I'm not sure. Maybe a 3 16 but that's it. There's your drop weight, and there's your and there's your hook for your 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 bait. And the idea is you're going to have this this weight on the bottom, and your bait is going to be suspended over the bottom by however long your leader uh, length is. You can and you can adjust that depending on how it goes. There's times when I adjust that throughout the day. If I find the longer leader, and to me this is kind of an average size leader. If this is working fine, I stick with it. If I, I may shorten it. And it, I tend to shorten it throughout the day anyway when the line gets a little beat up because this is going to be around a lot of rock. When it starts to get beat up along here, I may shorten it as the day goes on and retie when I have to. So let me just show you the basics of how I tie a drop shot. Now, as I said, a lot of people like to use leaders. I personally don't. If you're not a leader person, oh, let me get this out of here. A little twist there at the end. I just pulled out another one of my spinning rods with some eight pound line on it. So if you're going to rig your drop shot, here's your fluorocarbon line. I prefer fluorocarbon. Some people like that braid to fluoro leader. I do not. As I said, I don't trust leaders. I've had them slip on me, so I have stopped using them. But what I do, I'm going to just take your and I'll show you guys components more specifically, but I'm just going to show you how to tie one first here. I'm just going to take a size one drop shot hook. I think this is a trocar here. You guys can get a good look at that hook. And I'm just going to run it up the line. And I'm going to give myself enough room to make a nice tag end. But I will just run it up, and I'm going to tie a polymer, because to me, a polymer is very strong. It's very easy. And if I leave myself enough of a tag end, it's not a problem. So I will just run that so that I get my line. So you got your polymer. I'm going to tie right here. And your polymer is very simple. Just an overhand knot. And then take your hook and go through that loop. I hope you guys can see this with my fingers in the way and cinch it down. 
Now, there's one other thing you want to do after you've got that polymer on there. You're going to take your tag end, if I can find the tag end, and run it back through that hole of your hook, that tie, line tie, to run that back through there. Just pop that through. That will keep your hook straight, so that when you're fishing, your hook will stand out straight. And then you're just going to take, now I'm going to look at that leader, and that's a little long, so I might snip it down a bit. And then I'll just take a, take a look at it, see if it's where I want. Get a little bit over 12 inches. The one I put my weight on, and you can use any type. You can use a cylinder style weight. Comes out of the rocks pretty easy. And this one, I think, is this is a 3 8. So that's a pretty heavy one if you're going to fish deeper. And we'll talk about like weight size and hook size and things like that as we go on. You can use your teared up, teardrop type. You guys can see that. That teardrop style, which I tend to use more. Or you can just use just a, around a, a ball style. Either one. Any of those are fine. If you guys like one more than the other, use it. I tend to go with that teardrop size. And then it has that little clasp on there. I keep getting the hook stuck on my shirt there. It has that, you guys can see that little, that little clasp there. What I always do is I'll go through that. See if I can get through there. And that will hold it on. But what I do is I usually tie like an overhand knot just to keep it a little more secure. And you can do a double if you like. Sometimes I do. Just to keep that a little more secure in there so I'm not losing weights every five minutes. And then I'll snip off that tag end. So now you have your weight and your drop shot hook. I'm just looking for a bait to put on there. And as you guys will see, there's a ton of baits you could use. That's pretty much it, guys. Very simple. Very simple. No leaders. <laughs> and you do, you know, you, you do get line twist um, throwing a drop shot. To me, you get line twist in spinning setups, no matter what you throw, it seems. But um, you do get line twist. You just kind of manage it throughout the day. A lot of times I'll kind of hover my bait and my line over and let that bait kind of turn around after I'm fishing it a while. Get some of that line out. If you're fishing from a boat, at the end of the day, you can snip your drop shot off. Take a nice slow ride. Let your line uh, go out. You know, if you're just driving your boat, you can just let your line kind of go out. And that'll, that'll get the twist out at the end of the day if you're drop shotting all day. But I don't really find it's that, that big of an issue. And I'll change my drop shot line maybe a couple times during a season. But that's how you tie one. It's very simple, very simple. And I would suggest anything, like I, that's a 6'9", that's a 7-foot rod, a medium rod. I wouldn't go um, medium heavy to me is too stiff. Um, medium light you could do. I prefer medium. I like to have a little bit of, str a little, little more power in there. Um, but anything from that 6'9", or even 6'6", six, six, to say a 7'2", or a 7'3", I tend to stick, I, I like that, I've used that drop shot rod, that all-star for a long time <laughs> as I smack the weight around everything. Um, I've used this one just for a long time. I'm used to it. I like it. I have another Fenwick. Um, that is a 6.6 six, six I've used sometimes. Um, this Veritas from uh, Abel Garcia, the 7-foot medium, is a good one for it too. Whatever rod you like. Um, and what do you need is you need some drop shot weights, as I said. The cylinder type is good. This is good around a lot of rock. If you got more rock, that's probably better. That's a tungsten one. These are lead. Like I live, you guys know I live in New Hampshire, so lead is illegal, so we tend, tend not to use lead here. So those are lead ones. I use them if I'm not in a no lead state or a state where lead is legal. Uh, let's see, and some drop shot hooks. And I've got lots of different kinds. Um, <clears throat> this is a, this is a more of a wide gap one from Mustad. It's one of their drop shot hooks. A lot of times I'm using the, the, the trocar ones. I like those. That's actually a bigger hook, that's a one. Usually I'm using that, that size one. 
These are one knots. I think these are size one. And I hope you can see these. They're small hooks because you're going to use small baits. So uh, let's see. I'll just show you some of the other hook types. This is some Gamagatsu uh, finesse G finesse hooks. This is a size one. That's the late great Aaron Martins there. And this is the same hook, but the one knot size. G finesse is a very good hook. Uh, let's see, what are some of these other types here? I mean, you can go. This is more of a, uh, um, a, a different type of drop shot hook, which I'll show you, which you guys can use if you want to kind of Texas rig your worm that you're using, your bait. Um, and you can just, any, any store you go to, you know, that has tackle. These are just uh, the uh, split shot drop shot hooks from Gamagatsu. That's the red ones there, size two, size one. As you can see, these are all very small hooks. So the nickel ones, which I tend to use the nickel ones. Red ones, I'll use red sometimes, but got a bunch of those. A bunch of those. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. Then I've got some of the other, the owner mosquito hooks are nice. These are size two, uh, size twos. It's another good one if you guys really get into drop shotting. You can try different hooks, see which one you like the best. I can't say I've found one I don't like. Um, I tend to use those trocars, um, but I'll throw one. I'll try these. Like this is from Decoy. This is a nice drop shot hook. I think that's a size two. Yeah, size two. Um, I don't remember where I got these ones. These are from Japan. I'm not even sure I can say that name. Ryugi? Ryuji? <laughs> I'm sure I'm hacking that up. But there's tons of drop shot hooks out there. You know, find the ones you guys like. I'm not going to say one is better than the other. Uh, let's see. There's also these type here. If you're if line twist is an issue for you, uh, VMC makes these. I'll show them to you quick. I haven't really used them lately. I just kind of stick with the straight drop shot hook because, as I said, I'm not really worried about line twist. But this is their spin shot hook. Let me see if I got one that's not stuck in the pack here. You could try those if, 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 if line twist is giving you a real problem. You want to try to avoid it. This is the, the VMC spin shot one. See, it's got you can tie your leader ahead of time and then connect this and tie it to here. You would have to tie this, tie some leader and then run if you're going to tie a polymer. If you tie a different kind of knot, you can avoid that. But if you guys want to worry, if you worry about um, uh, line twist, you can always use those. As I said, I haven't used those in a while. And just some more troll cars here. And I just keep in these little plastic bags. Don't get rusty. Uh, but that's it. Um, as far as weights go, um, I tend to use a tungsten weight. I'm just trying to show you a few that I have here. Like I'll use like some Wu, from, from Wu Tungsten. I'll use some of theirs. Uh, Wicked Weights has great tungsten weights you can use for drop shotting. These are just some different, there's some teardrop ones. You guys can see that. That teardrop size. You can get the cylinder ones that are smaller. It all depends on, you know, how deep you're fishing, how rocky the, 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 the terrain is that you're fishing. As I was going to say, if it's real, real, real rocky, this might be the better option. As I said, I tend to start with the, with the teardrop. This is a small eighth ounce teardrop. And if I tend to, if I tend to get, get hang up, uh, hung up a lot, I might switch to that cylinder one. And I kind of start I'm trying to think. I would say that I probably start most of the time with a quarter ounce. Um, I start with a quarter ounce, see how that's working. Um, and as I said, also depends on the depth of, of fishing. If I was going to fish, you know, around here in one of my more shallow lakes, a quarter would be fine. If I'm going to go up to, let's say, the St. Lawrence River, Thousand Islands, and I know I'm going to be fishing heavy cover or heavy current and probably deeper, I might throw a three eighths and I throw a half um, just to get that bait down there and be able to feel it better with that heavy current. So it also depends a lot on, you know, where you're fishing and what type of, uh, what type of fishing you're doing. Um, as far as baits go, there's a ton, and I only took out a few. Um, probably the most popular 
drop shot bait in the world, I guess I'll say, but at least in the United States, is the Berkeley Maxent Flatworm. Everybody uses it. It works great. Uh, I was using it a lot. I, I did catch fish on a lot of different um, drop shot baits, but it's, it is hard to beat that 3.6 inch flatworm uh, from Berkeley, the Maxent. That's just a green pumpkin party, I think, yeah. But any color, I haven't found a color in their lineup that is no good. I think they're all good. You just gotta try them. But this is probably the most popular drop shot bait right now. This guy right here. But there are a lot of options, and there's a lot of good options. You know, we caught fish on drop shots even before the flat one came out. But I'm going to actually move these off of here as I go through them, so I don't talk about it more than once. Um, let's see, let's see. The uh, If you guys have ever thrown the jackal, the, the, uh, the cross-tail shad, this is a very popular, a very solid drop shot bait. It's four inch. I'll show you what one looks like up close. I don't think I've ever spoken about this bait on my channel before. But, you know, if you want a bait that's just going to look like some type of a bait fish down there, it's a great option. So that jackal cross uh, crosstail is a good option. If you, if you have these and have used them, I'm sure you know. If you haven't tried them, it's a good option right there. Oh, uh, let's see, let's see. Um, Somatis Baits, the Somata Shot is a really nice Drop shot bait, use these, caught some fish up on Champlain with these. And you'll notice kind of a, you know, a pattern with the way these baits are. They're very finessey. You know, that small, you know, three to four inch worm that's going to kind of mimic a bait fish. And it's kind of that shape is pretty universal. But Somatis Baits makes a great, great drop shot bait. The Somatis shot. Lots of cool colors. And it comes in a 15 pack, so very reasonably priced. And you get a 15 pack, so I'll just show you a few. I mean, I've got a ton of colors. That's just a watermelon. So a 15 pack is nice. It goes a long way. Oh, let's see, let's see. Um, Beast Coast has their Magic Flick, which is another awesome drop shot bait. That's the chronic color there. That's just their pink one. I don't know if they just call it. That's just Morning Dawn, they call it. Morning Dawn HD. Uh, the chronic. And that's the flick desire. But I'll show you what one of those looks like up close. And a lot of these drop shot baits make good Ned baits too. But that's the, the magic flick for Beast Coast. Excellent bait fish imitator. Looks great on a drop shot. Caught a lot of fish on Champlain last week with these too. Um, that was kind of the three baits. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I kind of got into the rotation. It was pretty much the flatworm, the magic flick, and the somatic shot. I think were the three main ones I used. If I see something here, I'll, I'll add that to the list. But I think those were the three main ones. Uh, let's see. Uh, Straight King has lots of cool, and I just pulled out the uh, the half shell. They have. They have other drop shot baits. I just kind of grabbed these off the shelf. The half shell is a very good one. Oops, can't really see much of them. The color. It's all pushed to one side. These are good drop shot baits. As I said, guys, all of these will work. You just got to throw the one you have the most confidence in. But the half shell is a very cool looking drop shot bait from Strike King. With some cool colors. I don't know what they call that one. That's called Magic. And you get some. Lots of cool different colors in there. Now, if I'm going through one particular bait um, style and you guys want to see more on it, let me know. I'll do a video just on that bait. I mean, if you want to just see, talk about the flatworm, we can do that. If you want to just talk about, you know, Somata Shot or the Magic Flick or any of the, the, uh, the Strike King ones, we could do that. No problem. Just let me know when you guys uh, comment on the video. But the, 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 the half shell when it came out was very popular. I think the kind of the flatworm is kind of <laughs> taking the uh, 
getting all the press lately. Uh, let's see, Gajo, their uh, Spirit Shad is a nice drop shot option. It's, you'll see that, you know, that, that drop shot style bait. And just to show you, when you, when you guys fish these, I like to just nose them on the end. So you can imagine that your hook and this bait is just going to, when you're shaking your rod, that it's just going to look like a bait fish swimming in the water. It's actually a simple way of fishing, but let's see which one's that. That is the Spirit Shad. That's the Green Pumpkin Purple Flake. So a very good option. I think this is the bigger size. This is the four inch size. I just like that color for smallies. For the Gajos, that's the bigger size. I'll show you what that bigger size looks like. So if you want that a bigger bait, I tend to stick with those three inch baits, the three, three and a half, they seem to work better. Not that the four inch can't catch you some fish when the time is right. So don't discount a four inch bait when you're drop shotting. Uh, let's see. Kitek makes a pretty cool bait called, the, it's their custom leech, which is a cool drop shot bait. You guys have ever seen these before? You can imagine what this, what this looks like in the water. If a bass were to see this thing. Now they're very thin, so. You really want a very small drop shot hook because you can see this is like paper thin almost. So really the only place for that hook is right in that head. So you do tend to, the, the fish do tend to tear these up, but they do look really cool in the water. It will get you some bites. I wouldn't say as far as longevity goes with it, it's, it's up there. But, you know, drop shot baits are thin, you know, they get beat up. That's just part of it. But if your drop shot bait's getting beat up, that means you're getting a lot of bites. So that's a good thing. These I tend to throw more in clear water. The leeches. So that's a cool option if you guys haven't seen that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, you want to even get up there a little more. I wouldn't say super, super pricey, but it may be a little more pricey. The Hasdong Shad from uh, Mega Bass is a really cool, lifelike bait option for drop shotting. So you can imagine, and this is a three inch bait, so you can imagine this little guy on the edge of your drop shot hook with that tail. So you're gonna get some, some action from the tail, plus just the natural look of that bait. Very, very cool. So this is a nice option. I haven't used the Hez Donk Shad much this year, though, when I think about it. Uh, let's see. The Spark Shad you could use, too. That three-inch Spark Shad. I tend to use this more on a ball head. But you could use that as a drop shot bait, if you like. I'm sure there's, you know, people that might be watching this saying, don't forget the Spark Shad. So the three-inch is a good option for that. I tend to use the, has, the, the haze dong there from uh, Mega Bass for drop shotting, but you could use a spark shot. I really haven't used it much as a drop shot when I think about it, but you can give it a shot. Um, a newer bait on the market, which is really cool, is this uh, drop minnow from Great Lakes Finesse. They have a really cool, uh, nice looking, what's this, 2.75 inch? So this is even smaller. But if you're looking for a different option, even a smaller bait, clear water, these are really nice for drop shotting or their finesse underspins. They look really cool on that. But the dro that uh, drop minnow from uh, Great Lakes Finesse is very cool. That's more one of the newer ones on the market. And there are hundreds more guys. Um, I just pulled these ones out. I'm sure I have another <laughs> ton of different drop shot baits you can use um, that will work. Um, so if you have one and I didn't mention it, uh, that's great because I'm sure it's, it's probably up here on the shelf somewhere. I just didn't bring it out. Um, the last one I'm going to talk about is the Robo Worm. And this is the four and a half inch straight tail Robo Worm, which is really a great drop shot option. They have great colors. They look very natural in the water. 
And um, I tend to nose hook these four and a half inch ones, like I showed you before, but you can use, I don't know if I showed you these hooks before. These are the rebarb hooks from RoboWorm, where you can actually, um, you know, Texas rig, so it's more weedless, if that's an issue for you, if you're fishing more around heavy weeds and you want to kind of, I don't know if I have one out. If not, I'll take one out and kind of show you. I thought I saw one land here. Yep, I think this is one here. I think this is one here. So these are the, these are, you know, the rebarb drop shot hooks from, and these are for, if you want to, let's say, um, you want to Texas rig your drop shot. So imagine this is tied onto your drop shot. This is your drop shot hook instead of just the, the straight regular drop shot hooks like these. So you can see the difference if you were going to do, let's say, a Texas rig type one. This is that rebarb hook. That's just your regular drop shot hook. So if I'm going to throw one of these robo worms, now here's the here's the six inch, which I don't really use as much, to be honest with you. But their colors are just so great. Every time I see a color that I like, I, I always I always grab them because they're so nice. But if I was going to throw this six inch one, sure, I could I could nose hook it. I mean. That's a beautiful worm right there. Their pores are just great. But with the rebarb hook, now I tend to use the four and a half, as I said, but the six, every now and then I'll throw it on just to see. Maybe you can get that bigger bite. Here I can, and you gotta remember, this is tied onto a, to my drop shot. I can just go through there. Oops, that's definitely a lousy rigging job. That wasn't too bad. I got so much salt on. All right, that's better. Through the middle. And just like your just like your Texas rigging a so this this is gonna be tied onto your drop shot. Just as like just like your Texas rigging a uh, a regular worm. Now that's on the edge of your drop shot. So now you can take this hook, the the barb of the hook, and just kind of skin hook it on the top there. Now you've got a totally weedless drop shot. So you're working this in the water column. It's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So these rebarb hooks do have their time and their place. Every now and then I'll switch up and try this. But it's a great option. Then the fish will just come up and eat that and he'll, he'll pop that right off and get hooked up. So if you're looking to get more of a weedless option, if you're fishing in more weedy areas and you want that, that rebarb hook, with the robo worm is a great idea. Great idea. And now my hands are covered with salt. Um, but that's kind of like the different baits that I use, the different hooks, the different weights. And now as far as fishing the drop shot. So let me get this here without totally making a, this is like the, <laughs> Everything is getting all tangled up here. Okay. Now I'm going to try my best to... Uh, let's see, let me get a yeah, drop shot bait here. Something easy. Uh, put a flat worm on her. See, I go right for the flat worm. So I'm gonna, just gonna nose hook my flatworm. So I'm going drop shot fishing. So that's what it's gonna look like. I'm not gonna be able to do that. It's gonna just hit the ceiling. So I've got my weight on the bottom and that drop shot. Now, this is gonna come up in the water column and it's gonna be kind of sitting like that and just swimming around. What I'm doing is targeting, it depends on what kind of structure you want to fish. Now, I could fish, I have done well in lots of different scenarios with the drop shot. Sometimes I have, I have done well on the outside of weed lines with a drop shot. I have done well flipping, or not just kind of flipping, but I'm just kind of taking, a lot of times I'll just hold on to the weight and I will like pitch that drop shot into holes in the weed beds. That can be very effective. If you're just fishing like bridge pilings, um, a rock, you know, you're just targeting rock, 
rocky areas. If you see rock on your sonar and you're just pitching areas where you're hoping that those fish are hanging out around those rocks, that's a great place for it. Bridge pilings. I don't really throw a drop shot around wood a lot. Um, they, it does tend to get hung up with that open hook. Uh, I would not suggest that you uh, target big laydowns or trees with a lot of branches sticking off. I think you you might get, <laughs> you might get a, a few fish on, but getting them out of there and not getting that hook stuck into a, a branch is, is difficult. When I see a lot of wood, I tend to pull out away from it, um, you know, and get away from those the gnarly areas. Now, sure, the rocks are gnarly and things like that, but you know that's expected. But I wouldn't say wood is a great is a, is a is somewhere where you want to throw heavy wood is a, somewhere we want to throw a drop shot. Stick to rocky areas, outside of weed lines. If you have a clear area inside of weed lines, um, docks. If you've got docks that actually have some depth to them, a, a drop shot just pitched next to a dock can be very good, very good. If you've got a lake that has a lot of docks and pontoon boats, right next to those pontoon boats, try not to clang your weight off of the pontoon boat. <laughs> be careful, you're fishing around someone's boat. But um, docks can be very good. Uh, shady areas, uh, weeds, holes in the weeds. Now, thick, thick weeds, no. Uh, that is not where your drop shot's gonna shine. The outside of that weed line is where you wanna focus on. Uh, let's see, um, and that's kind of, you know, and if you have a place that has a lot of, if you have fishing a river, like if I were to go, the last time I was on the Connecticut River, I did not bring my drop shot stuff. After I was there for an hour, I wished I had it. Um, so the next time I go there, I'm definitely gonna be doing a lot more drop shotting, pulling out more into the, the deeper channel, some finding some rocks that are maybe off the bent that I don't see, that I just see on the sonar, getting around some of those bridge pilings and getting, you know, a little further out and when I'm fishing those heavy rocky areas, because I did throw a net a lot around those bridge pilings on it and, and got hung up a lot and lost them. Maybe with this, it won't be so bad, but the areas, sometimes areas are just so gnarly. You know, you gotta, you're gonna lose some baits, but that's just, that's just part of doing business when you're throwing a drop shot. Um, but, you know, I would suggest focusing on weed lines, rock, deeper water, um, and things like that. Stay away from the wood, the, head, the lay downs, a lot of branches in the water. That's that's gonna get you frustrated with it getting a lot of hangups. If you're a shore fisherman, it can be tough. Um, unless you have an open, if you're you know shore fishing on a, like I say, a reservoir that's just rocky, you could launch a drop shot out into deeper water and work it back to the bank. You could do that. Um, you know, it's tough. I know from the shore, from the bank. You know, if you get hung up, it's you know unless you're going swimming for your drop shot bait. You know, sometimes you're gonna lose some some weights. Um, but that's it. Um, light line, six to eight pound. I don't usually go to 10. Um, I kind of go, I'm pretty much on that eight pound fluoro mode of my drop shot. I've, I'm, I'm, that's a happy medium where it's strong, um, but it's not too heavy and it's not too light. Six to me, you know, that I, I could probably get away with it, but I tend to stick with the eight. Uh, that just seems to work the best. And, um, you know, it's it's a really a great technique this time of year, summertime, hot water, um, a lot of people out fishing, uh, you know, a lot of fishing pressure. I found that the there was a lot of days on even on Champlain, the two weeks I was there where, you know, I wasn't getting bit flipping and pitching jigs and things. The frog bite was inconsistent. The chatter bait bite was inconsistent. Started throwing that that Ned and that drop shot and you started generating bites, generating bites. So, you know. It's, uh, you know, the hottest probably time of the summer. Uh, the water temperatures are probably as warm as they're going to be all year. Um, if those fish are tend to be out maybe a little deeper, maybe in a little cooler water, stick into those weed lines a little more, it's a great option, especially the outside. I always try to work my weed lines from the outside to the inside. I don't want to just barrel through the outside. I may spook the fish out of there. I'd rather work the outside, see what's going on there. And if you have a nice defined weed line, where you can work the outside and the inside. That's even better because you could work the outside and if there's nothing going on, move to the inside and work that. So I tend to work the, the weeds from the outside in uh, just to see. And if you have weeds, you know, milfoil clumps, let's say, or, you know, maybe some lily pad patches where there's like, you know, a circle of lily pads and you can work around it, the edges of with a drop shot, that's a great option. 
Um, especially when these sunny days, these sunny hot days, those fish are under that, you know, that canopy there. And you'd be surprised if you ever, if you've ever been fishing a lake that has like a lot of lily pads um, or heavy weeds, and if you stick your hand in there under those pads, and you can just, the water is definitely cooler in, in that shady area. So the fish like it too. You know, we like being in the cool, being in the cool air. So they, they like being in the cool water. Um, so, you know, focus on those areas. So I would say rock, weed, weed lines, um, some deeper water. If you have bridges, bridge pilings, docks, uh, especially docks that, you know, skinny water docks, not so much. If you have docks, at least have a few feet of water on them, have good shade. Those, those produce well. If they have a lot of uh, boats around them, you know, be careful. Don't hit the boats, but working the shady areas around those boats can be very productive. And, uh, and that's really it, guys. That's really it. Uh, I'm sure there's other you know, opinions on drop shot fishing that guys have, uh, things they might want to add. As I said, I'm not a leader guy. I go with a straight fluoro. There's a lot of guys that, that probably would never want to do that. They want to do the, the, the leader thing, but not me. And, and that's it. But um, it's really not, it's, it's, it's really, as I said, to me, for me personally, an underutilized uh, tactic that I don't take advantage of. As I said, I like to, you know, do my power fishing thing when probably if I pulled off the bank a little or targeted some different areas and lakes with more rock or or outside weed lines in these tough uh, summer months I'd probably do better and catch more fish but so I have to take my own lesson from my I have to watch my own video and, and follow the lessons of that but but that's it guys that's kind of my take on drop shot fishing it's the things that I use and as I said there's probably another hundred baits back there you can use for drop shotting if there's one you use that I haven't mentioned I'm sure it's great there's so many other companies that have other drop shot baits that are good. Um, the flatworm just seems to be like, you know, that's the most popular one now in 2024, or probably the last since it came out. Everybody loves the flatworm because it just, it works. But all of these work, all of them. So if you don't want to spend the money on a flatworm, uh, you could get yourself some robo worms and catch a lot of fish. You know, get yourself some, some out of shots and catch a lot of fish. They're all good and they all work. And I like when I drop shot, I like to try different baits. I like to try different uh, colors and just see different size baits, see what they like. Sometimes try that, you know, a robo worm, you know, and any type of worm like this you can use. And these rebarb hooks really make it easy. And then you can, as I said, you can, you can uh, Texas rig them. So if you got heavier cover, use one of these guys. And I mean, how great does that look? <laughs> what color is that? PS2. Okay, so that's the six inch PS2 color. It's like some brown, some almost some chartreuse and some, looks like some watermelon with some red flake in there. So that's a PS2 color from Rubble Worm. I could do just a video on Rubble Worm. But, uh, but that's it guys, that's it. I don't think I, I left anything out. There's, there's other types of hooks you can use. There's other styles, um, but I'll kind of stick with those, stick with the most, most popular. And not even the most popular, but the ones I use the most. You could go to your, go to the you know your local tackle shop and just get some some drop shot hooks from from Gamagatsu. If you're here in New Hampshire, I'm sure you can get some some tungsten drop shot baits. Get yourself start with with an eighth, a three sixteenths, a quarter, uh, depending on how deep you're going to fish, and some fluorocarbon line and a spinning rod, and you can go to town. You can you can fish the drop shot pretty much anywhere. Um, you know, with that, with that setup, it's pretty simple. It's pretty simple fishing. Um, I should take my advice and do it more. <laughs> but uh, as I said, any questions on any of these baits, um, anything that I, that I, that I might've said too quickly that I, I, I could, you know, expand on, let me know. Um, but that's it. That's, that's my two cents on uh, throwing a drop shot. And um, the next time I go fishing, which was not this week, I was actually considering going today. But another 90 plus degree day with high humidity. Um, I'm glad I didn't go because I was outside working in the yard for a while and it was rough. And if I was out there on the boat, I would have been like, why, did, why didn't I just wait? Because I think it's supposed to get a little cooler next week. So I'm going to try to get out. I've only got Monday and Tuesday, so it'll probably be Tuesday. Monday I got things to do because I'm going away to Maine uh, for a week, uh, leaving Wednesday. So I'm going to try to get out one more time. I've had a nice break after the Champlain two weeks on there and and the back is feeling pretty good today. And I think uh, after a weekend, it'll be really good. And uh, I like to get out one more day and maybe I'll, if I go to one of my deeper lakes around here, or if I go to the river, maybe I'll do some drop shotting and you'll have some drop shot video 
uh, clips too. Uh, but that's it. Any questions on anything I said? Um, if you have any recommendations for baits to try, let us know. Share the information. But um, and if I if I mentioned a bait that you'd like to know more about or see more of, let me know, like the Robo Worm or or any of these these cool drop shot baits, because there is a ton of options. I think every company makes a drop shot bait, pretty much. If there's one that, if they don't make one, I'd be shocked. Everybody makes a Ned, a stick bait, and a drop shot bait, and probably a creature bait, but uh, but that's it. So any questions on any of this, let me know. I probably rambled on now here for 40 minutes or, or plus, so I think that's probably good enough. I don't want everybody to fall asleep, but any questions, please, please let me know. I love when you guys give me comments. Um, please like the video, share the video. If you're new to my channel, you've never seen any of my videos before, please subscribe. I was looking at some of the analytics the other day and like 64% of the people uh, that watch my videos aren't subscribers. So why not subscribe? All you gotta do is click subscribe and that really helps with the uh, analytics for the, for the uh, YouTube page, okay? So I will see you guys soon on YouTube. Mark out.